When we hear martial arts, karate, taekwondo, judo are usually the first ones that come to mind. But did you know that we have our very own form of martial arts? Among the most popular forms of Filipino martial arts is eskrima, also known as kali or arnis, which has been gaining popularity in the past years. Let's learn more about our national sport and discover different ways to keep fit and healthy through arnis as we take this journey in fitness and in health. I tried their NIST back in high school, but I didn't really pursue it. This guy though, he is really making a career out of it. Come on, let's talk to him. Hey Daniel. How are you? Uh, I'm good, just wow. um, busy training. Training, what have you been up to lately? Well, my team just got back from the competition, okay. so right now I'm just focusing on just having fun in the martial art, you know, promoting the sport and all that. Speaking of the sport, how did you exactly get into Arnis and when? Well, I started Arnis uh, back in college. I took it as a PE class and there I just mm. fell in love with the sport. So from since then I've been competing. Now, you've been at this sport for a very long time. Yeah, um, almost 10 years, I think. Almost 10 years now. Can you give us a brief background of the sport? Well, Arnis is a martial art that we believe is derived from what our ancestors used back then for war. Okay. So it's more modern version now. A lot of practitioners use it for the sport. As of 2009, Republic Act 9850 declared it as the national martial art and sport Ooh, of the Philippines. Okay. Which type exactly do you practice? Well, the style I practice is the Kamao style. Kamao. It was founded by Grandmaster Richard Gallagher. Kamao as in? Yeah, like FIST. Like FIST, yeah. okay. So it stands for the Cali Arnis Martial Arts Organization. Ooh, but it's okay. an acronym also, so it means FIST. It was founded by Grandmaster Richard Gallego and Senior Master Ryan Gallego. And it's actually an eclectic style, which means it draws roots from various other styles of Arnis, Cali, and Eskrima. Oh, okay. So for our martial art, um, it has roots in Dose Pares, Modern Arnis, Cruzado Arnis, and just to name a few. How does Arnis uh, keep people or help people get fit? As with any sport, Arnis involves a lot of physical movement. Very intense. Yeah, and it's especially even more true when you're competing. So you can use it in competition and there's more intensity yeah. during competition, right? Okay, so now I'm ready to learn the basics. Can sure. you teach me the basics? Yeah, let's go ahead. Okay, let's go. So we're gonna start first with how to hold the stick. Okay, so the proper grip, you can either hold it at the very end, okay, or one fist from the bottom. So what about one fist from the bottom? So the difference being when you hold it at the end, you have a lot more range, you can reach farther. But here you have a little bit more control, so you can flick the stick a little bit easier. But for the purposes of what we're going to do today, we're going to use this grip. Okay. So we're going to hold it at the very end, and for our stance, we're going to put our right leg forward. How do you hold it though? Is it thumb here? Yeah. Okay. Thumb here or here, it's, mu it's more in preference. Okay. So dominant leg forward, stick, um, stick over here at the back. This is what we call the abierta position, or the open position. Okay. And your left hand, you're just going to keep it in your chest, so that it doesn't get tangled when you strike. Okay. okay. So for the first strike, we're going to do a downward diagonal strike and you're targeting the temple. the temple. So it goes like this. Okay. As you do that, you're going to shift your weight from the forward leg to the back leg, like so. Oh, okay. okay. And the stick goes all the way to the other side in what we call the serrada position, the closed. Open, closed. Okay. So let's try that. One, all the way here. And the second strike oh. is the opposite. It's a backhand strike to the other temple. Okay. And two. So that's still downward diagonal. Let's try that again. Oh, okay. So one, one and two. Oh, okay. So yeah, downward still, diagonal. Okay. It'll be easier to remember when you just imagine you're drawing a large X. Yeah, right. So okay, we call okay. that also pattern X. Mm -hmm. So pattern it's one X. and two. Yeah, exactly. So you just keep okay. repeating it until you kind of get comfortable. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to add some footwork. Okay. Okay. So for the forward movement, we're going to step with our dominant leg and then slide with the back leg. Okay. So it looks a little like this. So we call that the caballero. Caballero. And going backwards, we do the same thing. We step with the back leg first and then the dominant slide. Okay. Yep. Okay. So we'll go forward and backward. Forward, backward. Forward, backward. Okay. Now we'll add the strikes. Okay. So in each step, we're gonna do an X. Okay. okay. Let's try that. One, X. Then backwards, two. One. Two. Good. One, two, one, and two. So you have your footwork, you have your stance, you have your strikes. Now we're gonna add a block. Okay. okay. So to block the first strike, you're gonna bring the stick from here to here. 
notice the stick is pointing upward yeah. so that if you face me, mm -hmm. yeah. so you keep it here so that when the strike comes in, it gets blocked here. Ooh, okay. Yeah. And then the other side is just the opposite. Does my hand need to be like Yeah, so you keep degrees, it up here. Degrees? Yeah. And you keep it um, firm so that you can absorb the impact. Okay. So you have the strike here, one, okay. and then the other side, two. Just like that. Just like that. So it's one and two. Okay. So just a tip, you don't need to extend your block to reach my strike. Okay. Because if I can't reach you in the first place, it's not oh. a problem. So, I just so you can just keep it. it close to you, enough okay. so that you can block if the strike is coming. Okay. So you have these basic strikes. Mm -hmm. We're going to convert those movements into knife work. Ooh, okay. okay. So we're going to use a blade this time. So we'll set the sticks aside. We're going to so do knives uh, now. Okay. So I'll lend you this. So one key difference is that you don't need to hold this all the way back here because okay. you don't need to generate power. With the knife, it's a blade, it's sharp. So just a light slash and you okay. can cut Ash. your opponent. Oh. <laughs> I'm gashed. Okay. So we'll keep, the sta we'll keep the weapon just here in front okay. of you. This is still in a beerta position. Okay. And we can use the same movements. Mm -hmm. So if you recall the ekis, yeah. it's just a little smaller now because you don't need to make wide movements with the knife. Oh, okay. And our target points are different. Now we're going to use softer targets. A while ago, we were targeting the temple. Yeah. So now we're gonna target the neck. Oh, it's the neck now. Yeah, okay. so when we're striking, we'll visualize the neck. Okay. So let's try that out. Ekis, one, two. two. One, two, smaller movements. One, two. And remember to keep your live hand here. Okay. One, two, one, two. And now for the defense. Okay. So if you were to in encounter a strike by a knife, so you can just feed one right here, it'll be a little bit hard to block, right? Because it's a smaller object. Mm -hmm. So what you're gonna do instead is try to avoid it by stepping back. So okay. strike over here, yeah, I'm gonna step back. But I'm, at the same time, as you strike, go ahead. Okay. I'm gonna cut the attacking. Oh, so that's our defense. Oh, so I don't have an armor anymore. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway. So what's gonna happen now is that I'm gonna feed you the ekis. Okay. And you're gonna counter also with an ekis to my arm. Oh, okay. So let's try that out. Yeah, yeah. So you're gonna cut this. There you go. I don't wanna hurt anyone. And then cut the other okay. side. Okay. okay. Wow. So let's try that out. I'm gonna feed one, two. Okay. One, two. That's okay. Okay. One, two. Okay. Wow. So those are the basics. Uh -huh. We're gonna put that all together and we're gonna try some point system spark. Okay, let's go. Fight! All right, so we are done with our sparring session and it was a very intense one. I lost though to a world champion, so I'm not regretting any of it. Um, I got stabbed a lot of times here, so if that were a real knife, I would have been dead or I would have lost my arm or something like that. But uh, the sport itself, uh, you can actually apply it to a lot of things aside from uh, getting physically fit. You can also use it for self-defense. And the way Daniel actually demonstrated it earlier from the Arnish sticks, you can actually use different weapons on it. So yeah, it's a very practical sport that you can use a lot of ways. And I must say, uh, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to learning more of it in the future. Arnish is a very great way to work out because it uses every muscle group in the body. It helps increase the stamina, tones the muscle, improves flexibility, balance, and strength. With the total body workout you get from this sport, you will surely burn tons of calories every time. Aside from doing workouts, eating healthy is a very important part of living a healthy lifestyle. That's why I make sure to eat healthy to supplement my workouts. Like this tempeh sandwich, for example. It packs a lot of nutrients, is high in vitamins, making it a popular source of protein. Happy eating! And there you have it, another fun and exciting activity to stay healthy and fit for our national sport, Ernest. I do hope that you guys learned a lot from our episode today. And if you did, do not forget to like and share this with your friends so they may enjoy it too. And also, don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube page and ring that notification button so you guys may get notified every time we have new content. So, join me again next time as we go on our fitness journey in fitness and in health.